But you and I have to let the man know is we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's, it gets me hurt. <laughs> because, because I understand that it's not going to stop. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to stop until we stop it. That's right. And it's not just white men that's doing this to Brenda. No. And it's not just white men that's keeping us trapped. Right. It's black. We are oppressed. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. So the only way we're going to get some of this oppression and exploitation away from us or aside from us is come together against the common enemy. Welcome back to another episode of Road to William. You already know what we own today. So based off the thumbnail, I decided to choose these two leaders because, in my opinion, I feel they are very similar in many ways, revolutionizing Black people, tired of the injustice, and tired of seeing. I think at some point they both saw things from people they admired and looked up to and didn't like what they saw and didn't like how they treated others or this, that, or how they ran things. And I think they both got found out like, oh, you understand how this works, but you're not willing to continue and, and, and do the things like us and still look at us the same. I think they went down similar paths. Their own took them out in the end. Their own took them out at the end, even though they both pushed for all of us to come together. That's what spoke out to me. I was looking up the timeline of Tupac's music and I'm like, I'm like, oh, like maybe throughout his life, it would have changed, you know. All of his music was still preaching, like, yeah, people are pointing out and glorifying the hit 'em ups, the the beef songs, but it's like nobody's remembering, oh no, Brenda's got a baby was actually his first hit, if you really wanna talk about it. That's what uh drew me towards Tupac, like the positivity, like but the same with Malcolm X when I was younger and I was learning about Malcolm X, how someone can change. Like, you don't have to be what the environment is. There's an environment that you can dive into if you want, but the harder route is not to, I'm not about to, y'all not ready for that. Y'all not ready for that. So we're just gonna vibe out together, okay? Um, we're going to watch, we're going to start off with Malcolm X. You already know we share the same birthday, May 19th. I had no choice but to, you know, follow this path. You know. The first speech, and this is just one of, we just kick starting it. We just kick in the dust. We're kicking dust with this. I just wanted to kick the dust a little bit. Hmm? Start the conversation. Start the conversation. Malcolm X, fiery speeches, inspiring words of a revolutionary. Right now, or we don't make anybody today. So whatever kind of action program can be devised to get us the things that are ours by right, then I'm for that kind of action no matter what the action is. I don't think when a man is being criminally treated that some criminal has the right to tell that man what tactics to use to get the criminal off his back. When a criminal starts misusing me, I am going to use whatever necessary to get that criminal off my back. And the injustice that has been inflicted upon Negroes in this country by Uncle Sam is criminal. Don't blame a cracker in Georgia for your injustices. The government is responsible for the injustices. The government can bring these injustices to heart. And what you and I have to let the man know is we are peaceful people. We are loving people. We love everybody who loves us. But we don't love anybody who doesn't love us. We're nonviolent with people who are nonviolent with us. We, but we are not nonviolent with anyone who is violent with us. But when someone attacks you, when someone comes at you with a club, when someone comes at you with a rope, when someone comes at you with a gun, despite the fact that you've done nothing, he tells you, suffer peacefully. 
Pray for those who use you despitefully. Be long suffering. And how long can you suffer after suffering for 400 years? The most disrespected person in America is the black woman. The most unprotected woman, a person in America is the black woman. The most neglected person in America is the black woman. And as Muslims, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches us to respect our women and to protect our women. Then the only time a Muslim really gets real violent is when someone goes to molest his woman. We will kill you for our woman. I'm, I'm making it plain, yes. We will kill you for our woman. We believe that if the white man will do whatever is necessary to see that his woman gets respect and protection, then you and I will never be recognized as men until we stand up like men and place the same penalty over the head of anyone who puts his filthy hands out to put in the direction of our women. That whenever a people come to the conclusion that the government which they have support proves itself unwilling and or proves itself unable to protect our lives and protect our property because we have the wrong color skin. We are not human beings unless we ourselves band together and do whatever, however, whenever is necessary to see that our lives and our property is protected. And I doubt that any person in here would refuse to do the same thing were he in the same position. I'm speaking as a black man from America, which is a racist society. No matter how much you hear it talk about democracy, it's as racist as South Africa or as racist as Portugal or as racist as any other racial, racialist society on this, on this earth. The only difference between it and South Africa, South Africa preaches separation and practices separation. America preaches integration and practices segregation. This is the only difference. They don't practice what they preach. Whereas South Africa preaches and practices the same thing. I have more respect for a man who lets me know where he stands, even if he's wrong, than the one who comes up like an angel and is nothing but a devil. <laughs> and the only way we can bring about a change is to talk the kind of language, speak the language that they understand. The racialist never understands a peaceful language. The racialist never understands the nonviolent language. The racialist, we have, he's spoken his language to us, for 400 years, we have been the victim of his brutality. We are the ones who face his dogs that tear the flesh from our limbs, only because we want to enforce the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones who have our skulls crushed, not by the Ku Klux Klan, but by policemen, only because we want to enforce what they call the Supreme Court decision. We are the ones upon whom water hoses are turned with pressure so hard that it rips the clothes from our back, not men but the clothes from the backs of women and children, you've seen it yourself, only because we want to enforce what they call the law. Well, any time you live in a society supposedly based upon law, and it doesn't enforce its own law because the color of a man's skin happens to be wrong, then I say those people are justified to resort to any means necessary to bring about justice where the government can't give them justice. Let us remember that we are not brutalized because we're Baptists, we're not brutalized because we're Methodist. We're not brutalized because we're Muslim. We're not brutalized because we're Catholic. We're brutalized because we are black people in America. They put Moses in jail. They put Daniel in jail. Why, you haven't got a man of God in the Bible that wasn't put to jail when they started speaking out against exploitation and oppression. And once the white public is convinced that most of the Negro community is a criminal element, then this automatically paves the way for the police to move into the Negro community, exercising Gestapo tactics, stopping any black man who is in the, on, on the sidewalk, whether he is guilty or whether he is innocent, whether he is well-dressed or whether he is poorly dressed, whether he is educated or whether he is dumb, whether he's a Christian or whether he's a Muslim, as long as he is black and a member of the Negro community, the white public thinks that the white policeman is justified in going in there and trampling on that man's civil rights and on that man's human rights. Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach to get like the white man? Who taught you to hate the shape of your nose? 
and the shape of your lip? Who taught you to hate yourself from the top of your head to the soles of your feet? Who taught you to hate your own kind? Who taught you to hate the race that you belong to? So much so that you don't want to be around each other. You know, before you come asking Mr. Muhammad, does he teach hate? You should ask who yourself, who taught you the hate being what God gave you. And I, for one, as a Muslim, believe that the white man is intelligent enough. If he were made to realize how black people really feel and how fed up we are without that old compromise and sweet talk. Stop sweet talking. Tell him how you feel. Tell him how, what kind of hell you've been catching and let him know that if he's not ready to clean his house up, if he's not ready to clean his house up, he shouldn't have a house to catch on fire and burn down. We declare our right on this earth to be a man, to be a human being, to be respected as a human being, to be given the rights of a human being, in this society, on this earth, in this day, which we intend to bring into existence by any means necessary. I just want to say that about Kurt, he, but when Kurt, he got going out there, you know we have a stuff in the truth and talk about Kurt. So they told me to watch my land. Fuck that. Y'all can give me all our church to this bad out here. It ain't free, so we don't have shit. Let's be real. Got to have a My name is Adam. How you going to drop out? You know, you're going to be real. I'm going to be talking like real shy. I'm going to be talking from my heart. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's all here. So I'm not going to do that. We're talking to the swing, so... You know, some of y'all might get lost. I'm sorry. But I say I'm losing it. I mean, I'm losing it. I mean, that for real. This ain't no free speech. This shit ain't like just to make it sound good. So I think y'all are going to make it feel ooh, felt that. I'm losing it. You feel me? I know y'all are going to be up the table. That man got fucked. And I do, but we all got fucked. And mine is about my motherfucking self. You know what I'm saying? I need to tell y'all about my mama and the gang and all that. But let me tell you where I ended up, y'all. Let me tell you where I ended up. My mama was a crack act. I ended up in Baltimore welfare with no lights on in high school. So we got to really, 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 really watch this struggle shit. If we're going to struggle, we got to struggle every motherfucking day till the shit is over. Let us know, you know? And I'm going to be the that because I never had a daddy. I never had nobody sit me down and tell me this. You know what I'm saying? They told me, but I didn't believe it because they let my mama crack. I'm telling you, it was a bunch of her me, cracked out, homeless, no life, and both of them. And my mama put motherfucking work in. Do you hear me? My mama was a gun cracking. Why I'm talking about you, you motherfucker. Excuse me. And my mama put in work. You know? Laying up in a room, tracked out. I, I got a bitch name for a lot of motherfuckers. You feel me? And this is why I'm telling y'all, I got to be serious and we don't struggle. The struggle got to come from our heart. It ain't coming to you. You know, you look for a king, back in. It got to come to you. I'm looking at you and you look goddamn good to me. You're my sister. And I ain't gonna let none of these clouds take you down. You feel me? You feel me? And when I say full black, I mean that shit. Because these white folks see us and stuff. I don't care what y'all think. I don't care if you think you would go ahead and check. I'm going to call it like it is. How you going to be a man and start? Go ahead and know. And we have to go for about five million dollars to make a man and even one of them motherfuckers. So how are you going to be a man? You know? And that's green on all this life. A motherfucker, I have nightmares. I mean this shit. I'm dead serious. And the way I heard I'm not talking about God, I have nightmares, bro. I swear to God. Shit changed me. I used to be my mother. I used to be cool. I used to be happy. I used to be able to talk good. I used to be talking about cursing. I used to be walking up. But goddamn, they just took the time to. They just took the juice out. They took it out. They just 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 took it out. welcomes the outspoken Negro leader, Malcolm X. Sir, what, what's the real reason why you two men split? Is it merely ideological or is it personality? What else? 
probably personality. It was not uh, the statement that uh, originally was gave, given by the movement when, I, when we split. More personality than anything else. You've called people like Martin Luther King, who just got a Nobel Peace Prize, uh, an Uncle Tom. Is this correct? First? Well, I'd rather say that uh, in the States, there's a law that has recently been passed or a decision handed down by the court where if you call someone an Uncle Tom, they can sue you for libel. Well, so I never refer to them as Uncle Tom. I would say that Uncle Martin is my friend. Uncle Martin is your friend, yet you would disagree with his uh, approach to what he wants to accomplish. Definitely. If his approach would bring about uh, what the black man in America needs to completely eliminate the problem that we have, I would say well and good. But I very much doubt that uh, anyone who uh, adopts the approach that Martin Luther King has been teaching to our people in that country can point to any meaningful gains that has actually served to solve the problem. Black Muslims uh, have sometimes, whether you have or not, and I think probably you have, have sometimes, it seemed to me, been preaching hate to meet hate. Uh, I don't advocate any kind of hate. But there's a lot that, of talk that sounds very much like it. No, I think that the guilt complex of the American white man is so profound until when you begin to analyze the real condition of the black man in America, Instead of the American white man eliminating the causes that create that condition, he tries to cover it up by accusing his accusers of teaching hate. But actually, they're just exposing him for being responsible for what exists. Well, that's, that's uh, something of, of an argument. But I've heard speeches made by some of the people of your group. I think I've heard you make speeches. It seemed to me that you were advocating what I would have to describe, I think, as violence to meet the serious injuries that have been done to your people, with which I totally agree. I don't call that violence. Uh, I don't in any way encourage black people to go out and initiate acts of aggression indiscriminately against whites. But I do believe that the black man in the United States and any human being anywhere is well within his right to do whatever is necessary, by any means necessary, to protect his life and property, especially in a, in a country where the federal government itself has proven that it is either... Uh, in, unable or unwilling to protect the lives and property of those human beings. Just before Pierre takes it, you've got a pretty good fighter in the world's heavyweight champion lined up with you to help out. Yes, Pierre. <laughs> well, Mr. X, if, I guess I call you that. Is that a proper uh, appellation, yes. Mr. X? I, I'm wondering if you still believe, as I think you certainly did at you know, the time you were allied to the black Muslim movement, in a segregated black nation no. in North America. I don't believe in any form of segregation or any form of racism. Uh, I'm against any form of segregation and against racism. Is it, uh, am I right in saying that the black Muslim movement, which you have left, did believe in that? Well, Elijah Muhammad taught his followers that the only solution was a separate state yeah. for black people. And as long as I thought he genuinely believed that himself, uh, I believed in him and believed in his solution. But when I began to doubt that he himself believed that that was feasible, and I saw no kind of action designed to bring it into existence or bring it about, then... Uh, I turned in a different direction. Are you still a Muslim? You're oh, yes. I'm You're a Muslim. I believe in the religion of Islam, which believes in brotherhood, complete brotherhood of all people. But at the same time that I believe in this brotherhood, I don't believe in forcing my uh, desire for brotherhood upon those who aren't willing to accept it. Of course, I think the Christians would say that they also believe in brotherhood. What did you say to that? I'd say they believe in it, but don't practice it. That would be a pretty good answer. Sir, when the Muslim... Uh, goes up in the minaret twice a day. He cries to the world, there is but one God, and he is Allah. Do you deny that there is a Christian God? Uh, the Muezzin does this five times a day. Five times, and I only heard him twice. Well, you were fortunate to hear him twice. <laughs> but he does this five times a day, and the same God that he says uh, that he expresses the existence of is the God that the Christians profess to believe in themselves and the God that the Jews believe in, one God, the creator of the universe. The Muslims believe in the God that created the universe, and I think the Christians do, and the Jews do. Now, as long as all of them are talking about the creator, uh, the Jews may call him Jehovah, and Christians may have another name for him. Those who are Arabic-speaking refer to him as Allah. Well, we believe in the same God. Now, as the Muslim religion advances in the United States, are you... Uh, modernizing it or, or sticking with the old faiths, for example, the complete segregation of the sexes? I think that everything today on this earth is being modernized. Uh, religious uh, principles and practices, as well as political and other, and other things. 
Now, when you went to Mecca, this is a very sacred and forbidden city. I tried to get to Mecca myself and certainly didn't make it, uh, not being a Muslim. But how would they accept you as one? You're an American. There are few American Muslims. This is true. And by being an American and not having uh, any, not being able to speak the Arabic language, I did strike a snag, a very serious snag. But I was fortunate uh, to have been pretty well known by the officials in Arabia. And they knew, too, that I had uh, accepted Orthodox Islam. It had been highly publicized in the paper. And I became a guest of the state. I was a guest of who? of Prince Faisal, the present King Faisal, Faisal. And they made it possible for me to go before the committee, Hajj committee or Hajj court, who examines you and, and asks you questions about your belief. And if you pass it, then you are okay to go to Mecca. But it's You would true. have to have a translator then. Uh, oh, I had one. Then we and realizing that our problem in America, that we are black Americans and we have a problem that goes beyond religion. We formed a group known as the Organization of Afro-American Unity. And the objective of this organization is non-religious, number one. Any Negro can belong to it. And the objective of, the, of that organization is to uh, bring about a condition that will guarantee respect and recognition of the 22 million black Americans as human beings. We feel that the problem, number one, of the black man in America is beyond America's ability to solve. It's a human problem, not an American problem or a Negro problem. And as a human problem or a world problem, we feel that it should be taken out of the jurisdiction of the United States government and the United States courts and taken into the United Nations in the same manner that the problems of the black man in South Africa, Angola, and other parts of the world, and even the way they're trying to bring the problems of the Jews in Russia into the United Nations because of violation of human rights. We believe that our problem is one not a violation of civil rights, but a violation of human rights. Not only are we denied the right to be a citizen in the United States, we're denied the right to be a human being. Mr. X, may I thank you very much for coming on our program and perhaps clearing away some of the cobwebs of misconception that some of us might have had about your belief. And I think you're a very sincere man, and it takes a lot of courage to, ad uh, to admit a former well, belief is wrong. And we congratulate you for that and the service you've performed tonight in giving us your... I got to go here because I can't hang nowhere else. Somebody working out a plan. I have something to offer business that hasn't been shown before. You know, I have a whole energy that represents not just black youth, but white youth, Mexican youth. You, you know what I'm saying? That that um that change right before you go from being 18 and unresponsible to when you go to being like 21, 22, and the whole world's on your shoulders. Um, I, I believe strongly that um my audience empathize with me because I show that side. I show that emotion, raw, uncut, good and bad. And so I think I can bring that um more funnel, more um directed into screenplays or albums producing, managing, you know what I'm saying? If I can um, figure out just how to control it. First, I want to say peace to my mother. She's not here, but I got to give a peace out to her because I wouldn't have been here if it wasn't for my mother. And I look in the front of this thing and it says start from within to rebuild our original greatness, right? right? Okay, well, that's what my mother did. You know what I'm saying? And I'm listening about freedom fighters and strugglers. Well, you got to understand that when, when it was in to have a gun and to be in the street, my mother gave that up to be in the house and wash the dishes, you know what I'm saying, and feed us and put the thoughts in our brains, you know what I'm saying, because we didn't get any of that history from all of those soldiers that we lost. We got none of that. They all went to jail, if you can remember. They all went to penitentiaries. We didn't see none of that knowledge. If it was not for my mother who stayed home and didn't go out and do all that, then I wouldn't have had shit, excuse my language, but I wouldn't have been nowhere. So what I want to do, hopefully, is I want to be... I'm I, I, not. I want to be. I am. Tupac Shakur. I have to be a reminder that we can't. It's not. We can't chill out. No, we, it ain't time to cool out. And banquets and all that. It's still on. It's on just like it was on when you was young. And you want to say fuck that? Just like you said fuck that back then. So how come now that I'm 20 years old, ready to start some shit up? Everybody telling me to calm down. You know, don't curse. Go to school. Go to college. But fuck that. You know, we had colleges for a while now. You know what I'm saying? And it's still ringers out there, and niggas are still trapped. You know what I'm saying? And, and it gets me hurt. <laughs> because I understand that it's not going to stop. You know what I'm saying? It's not going to stop until we stop it. That's right. And it's not just white men that's doing this to Brenda. Right. And it's not just white men that's keeping us trapped. Right. It's black. Right. You know what I'm saying? We have to find a new African in everybody. In all of us. 
Because if we keep running around looking for black and who got the most colors on and who got the baddest dashiki on, we still gonna get, excuse my language, fucked. Right. Because that it irks me that, that my mother right now is going through, um, drink, you know, she has to get clean. This is somebody who I watched travel the whole country, you know what I'm saying, during a time when women were scared to speak up. But a black panther, she spoke at Harvard, Yale, everywhere. And now I see my mother as, as what really going on. You know what I'm saying? I don't see no big parades around my mother now. And she ain't got dozen fucking awards. And I don't see nobody. You, know, you understand what I'm saying? So about all this, I take that lightly. I take all this lightly. What I want you to take seriously is what we have to do for the youth. Right. Because we're coming up in a totally different world. Right. This is not the same world that you had. of the events that have taken place here in Los Angeles recently, we have to go to the root. We have to go to the cause. Dealing with the condition itself is not enough. And it is because of our effort toward getting straight to the root that people oftentimes think we are dealing in hate. We are oppressed. We are exploited. We are downtrodden. We are denied not only civil rights, but even human rights. So the only way we're going to get some of this oppression and exploitation away from us or aside from us is come together against the common enemy. Who taught you to hate the texture of your hair? Who taught you to hate the color of your skin to such extent that you bleach? Thank you all for tuning in. Let me know in the comments how you felt about the video. Share this video. If you haven't subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Mr. Malcolm, when you broke with Elijah Muhammad back in March, you said it was because the black Muslims were too narrowly sectarian and inhibited. And because Elijah Muhammad had become 
blindly jealous of you and the personal following you had gathered. That, I said the first part, but the last part, I didn't say that Elijah Muhammad himself had become blindly jealous. I mentioned that it was his family and the officials in Chicago. Everything that I said always was designed to protect Mr. Muhammad himself, primarily because the image that he had created uh, was the image that enabled his followers to remain strong in faith and things of that sort. And I didn't want to see any uh, adverse effect or negative result uh, develop in the faith of all of his followers. Mm -hmm. But actually, uh, despite the fact that I tried to protect the Muslim movement, if you'll notice, they uh, used their newspaper to slander me and to label me as a hypocrite and uh, as a rebel. And Mr. Muhammad himself said that I defect. Well, in reality, I never even left the Muslim movement. They put me out. And they put me out because of what I knew. And what I knew was told to me by Mr. Muhammad's son, uh, Wallace Muhammad himself. They put me out and they put him out. Well, now, first of all, let's find out what it is that Wallace Muhammad, Elijah Muhammad's son, told you. Well, uh, number one, if you notice, the, the stick that I always used in presenting, representing, and defending the Muslim movement was the fact that it had the ability, re ability to reform the morals of the so-called Negro community. Yes,